All right, guys, so let me show you what I have created to give you a demo of running this in Vulkan with the Oculus Quest. I'm just going to go ahead and hit play. And this is the same thing that I showed you before. I just changed the actions. So the way that this works is every button has a different gravity and effect that I applied to the visual effects graph. So the first one resets it. The one that I just touched changes the intensity as I am designating there. And then the last one just changes also another property in the graph. I'm gonna see how the graph is changing. So I wanna show you how I did this and what things you need to do to basically make this work in Oculus Quest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into Unity and show you the changes that I had to make. So like I said, this is the Oculus Quest hand tracking physics URP. I already checked that into GitHub, so feel free to check it out. As soon as I release this video, I'm going to be making it available in my GitHub, which is going to be in the description of this video. Also, if you like what you see, I would appreciate if you support me in Patreon. Thank you very much for doing that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the changes that I had to do. So of course you have to have Android selected. This is the new scene that I created. So if I go to player settings, so now what we need to do is we need to go into player. Then in player, make sure that you look at the Android options and we're gonna go down to graphics API. So if you have OpenGL, which is the one that I had, the OpenGL ES3, Make sure that you delete it and then have this one as being, you know, the one that we're going to be using for Android. The other thing you also need to check is make sure that we're using the Android 6.0 API level 23 or beyond. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And then I think everything else is just like that. Then in the XR plugin management, if you don't have the plugin management already installed, make sure that you install it. Once you install it, make sure that you select Android and then have the Oculus option selected. Then in the Oculus, I have multi-pass enabled and also the V2 signing for Quest. These are settings that were just as default, so I didn't want to touch that. The other things that I also had to do is if you go, well, you probably already know this because you're using my repo, but you, I'm using the universal rendering pipeline. Make sure you have that if you're starting from a new project. Otherwise, what I'm showing you is not gonna be applicable. It's going to be applicable if, if you're using HDRP, but the settings are gonna be different, so make sure that you use the same pipeline that I'm using. And then the other thing that I, that I also changed is I changed this to Ultra. This might not be performant and it might not work really well for you if you're releasing a game. For my experience, I'm just doing this because this is just a prototype experience. I'm not building a game right now, so just make sure that you leave these to the default settings. And if you need to scale up some of the levels, make sure that you are aware that you need to be careful with what you're setting here. So now that we have that selected, I, I didn't really change anything else. So that's everything that you need to do as far as like the project to get it working, to run it. The compilation time in my case took about five minutes to compile and push it. And then every time after that, it's just being really fast. So now what I want to show you is I want to show you some of the project setup and how and what I'm doing on this project. So if you guys need to look at it, then you know, you know, you know what I'm doing. So I have what's called a VFX manager right now. And if I double click on this VFX, I can show you what it has. So it's basically a visual effects that you can add after you add visual effects graph. I'm also going to be showing you the version of visual effects graph before I keep going, because that will teach you why what I had to do to make it work. It's going to package manager. And I'm also using the URP. The same is going to match the version of the URP that you're using for visual effects graph. So if I look at in project, which is going to be everything that I have installed, you can see that I'm using Universal RP 7.3.1, and I'm also using Visual Effects Grass 7.3.1. I wanted to make sure that they were the same because I know Unity like to push these, you know, in coordination. So you want to make sure that those are the same, and that's how I got it to work. The XR plugin management, I'm using version 3.2.6 as of today, and then you know the combination of all those three is what you see on the screen. So. If we go now to the actual graph, and I'm not gonna go to the graph because this is not much about the graph. All you need to know is that your particles, your visual effects particles, GPU particles are gonna be rendering okay in the in the Oculus Quest. So I had to lower the amount of particles that I was sending. The capacity is 25,000. I incremented it a little bit more. And then the game was slowing down dramatically. So just make sure that you play with those settings based on you know what you need in your game. And then I also have, if I go here to the blackboard, I have three different properties. If you look at these properties right here, and we go ahead and zoom in here, and you're gonna see that each label here, like reset, drag, intensity, and radius. So specifically, the reset is going to reset any of the effects, but 
the drag is going to map to this, the intensity is going to map to this property, and radio is going to map to this property. So if I expand it, I have a minimum of one, maximum of 10. I also have a minimum here and a maximum, a radius minimum and maximum. And then what I'm doing is I have a script that basically sets the minimum when I'm resetting and then the maximum when I'm pressing, I'm setting the maximum to these properties when I'm basically pressing each one of these buttons. So that's how this works. If we go back and then close that out and we look at the VFX manager, which is a script that I implemented. So this script itself is going to have a required component and I'm gonna show you the code as well. But the required component is going to be a visual effects graph. The, as soon as you add that script, it's going to require these components, so it's gonna add it, but you're gonna to have to create a, an actual asset, which is like the one that I have here under visual effects. So make sure you look at that folder because that's going to show you, you know, where that is. And if you want to create a new effect, of course, you can just right click here, go into create, and then select visual effects somewhere in here. Here we go. And then select visual effects graph. And that's going to create, you know, a an empty visual effect. And then you can just add any other notes that you need. So once you have that, then all you have to do is just associate it with the asset template. And then my script is going to look for that asset template. In my case, I'm looking for a specific, a specific properties because I need a drag, I need an intensity and a radius. These are properties that I'm exposing on the visual effects and then the script goes in and say, okay, you know what? If I wanna change the drag, I'm gonna send that information to this drag. If I need to change the intensity, I'm gonna change this intensity and then so on. So let's go ahead and look at the VFX manager so that you know what I'm doing there. So like I said, this is just an inspector variable visual effect and then I'm just making sure that, you know, the I'm actually not exposing this, this is just a requirement. So when you add the script, it's going to add this component, and then I'm just going to assume that you, you the, the actual script that you, the visual effects that you added, that you already added an effect to it. So it's not a good assumption. I should probably be doing some double checks, but that's what happens is on the awake, I get a reference to, to that component. And then after that point, I can basically add, access the properties. So I have drag values, minimum and maximums, intensity, minimum and maximums, radius, minimum and maximums, and I'm just you know using those to set the values when somebody pushes a button. So this is gonna be the, the main method that I'm using to set those properties. So if I, let's say that I press on the intensity, I'm basically changing the drag to the minimum, and then the intensity is going to become the maximum, the radius is gonna be the minimum. And then the same thing on all the other properties, it's just whatever the one that I'm passing in, that's the one that is gonna get the max, and then everything else is gonna get the minimum. That way, that way I can, basically exaggerate the effect and then tell you that you are basically setting the effect to have the drag property as the maximum. And then when you do reset, I just basically set everything to the minimum. So let's go ahead and look at Unity here and look at the inspector. So on the previous video, I show you that how I organize these buttons. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, just make sure you watch that video. But what I had to change in here, I'm still sending the inf information to the event log, as you can see by looking at the button trigger, looking at the logger, the log info on the button press. But you can also see that I'm sending an event, I'm basically sending a message to the VFX manager, max out effect, and I'm passing the actual effect that I'm calling. In this case, it's going to be, it's just going to be a reset. And then in the other ones, so like for example, on the drag, all I'm saying is, okay, it's gonna change the label here. I'm saying activating visual effects draw property. And then the effect that I want to exaggerate is going to be the drag. And then I'm doing the same thing on this other one. This one is doing it for intensity. And then this one is doing it for the radius. And then what happens is, you know, when you actually do it, it's going to log. So one way that I can do it to test it without actually building it, even though I already showed you how it works in the Oculus Quest, is I can run it and then I can go into the scene view. I can go into one of these buttons and I'm just gonna make sure that we have a view of the graph and also a view of the event log. So if I go ahead and move it down, you can see that that effect gets applied. If I go ahead and select this and move it down and I see that that event get apply and then the same thing with this one so i'm applying the radius property so now that one got set and then i can also reset it by just pushing this down so this is going to be the default behavior so that's honestly everything that i wanted to show you and i'm really excited about getting visual effects craft to work on the oculus quest because there's going to be a lot of cool things that i'm going to be bringing in so that's everything that i wanted to show you guys thank you